it's been six years and the only three photos uh, are the ones that are, are really unfortunately <laughs> not super usable in the film. Oh, okay. We're putting out an all points bulletin for photos of the dog. And <laughs> yes. Just re reach out to Colin. Film. <laughs> film. Film. Yeah, right. Janice, Janice Joplin serves as a sort of rock and roll bookend for the dog. She's there at its opening and at its closing. Let's listen. Janice was up in the green room, and of course she was belting back the uh, Southern Comfort and stuff. And I remember getting up saying, let's give the bastards a show. When I saw her sing that first time at the family dog, it made me cry. I mean, that woman... She made me cry. There are so many voices in this film, a great deal of like institutional knowledge when it comes to the Denver music scene. Scott, Dan, did you feel the clock ticking to preserve these stories? Did we ever? That's, that is exactly why we did this. You know, Scott and I got together six years ago and uh, Scott was doing a poster show on the Denver Dog posters. Uh, he was the only other guy I had known that knew anything about this place. And again, I grew up in Denver, never heard about it until I was in my 30s. Uh, and we said, you know what, let's, let's do something about this. This history is uh, being lost. You know, it started out as an idea for, a, you know, an article or a book. And to your point, people started dying from that era. And we said, we got to get these people on camera. Oh you know, let's do a documentary. <laughs> you know, we're just a couple of guys that have absolutely no experience. And uh, through sheer enthusiasm and naivete, uh, we, we, we started calling around. You know, you just start with one person and it leads to another. I mean, you're, you're journalists. You know how this works. And next, and people came out of the woodwork. And we're talking people in their 70s and 80s who, you know, couldn't tell us enough uh, and with enough uh, excitement about this place that they had been to 50-something years before. Scott? Yeah, as we, um, as we sort of say in the movie, without the photos and the film, the story resided in sort of the archive of individual memory. It was people's mm -hmm. memories to, we needed to piece it together, and they were dropping like flies. And we, the, the desperation of the immediacy of, of capturing this history now while we could is really, as Dan said, what prompted us to make the film because it would, only through interviews could the story be captured at this point. And so only through film could it really be told. As Record Dan a story if you can, guys. made a film prior to this. Uh, Dan, you work in healthcare. Scott, you're an art history, <laughs> art history professor at DU, a six year project. And uh, well, thanks Dan, for doing it, y'all. That's awesome. began in part because of a conversation you had with your parents about growing up in what you indeed thought was a, a dusty cow town where nothing cool happened? What's this story? Well, you know, it's funny. Uh, you know, my parents are from New York City. My mom saw the Beatles' first U.S. show. They had this great kind of 60s experience uh, with that music. And, you know, I grew up down here in the tech center, and there was nothing going on in the 80s and then in the early 90s. And that 60s culture was still reverberating you know, those 